Hello, and in this video we're going to talk about a very important rule in terms of probability. First off, recall what the general definition of a probability is, namely, the probability of an event E is equal to the size of its event space divided by its corresponding sample space. And always remember that any probability must always be between 0 and 1. To derive the next probability property that we want, consider this picture. Consider two different sets A and B. So let A be the left, and let us assume B is on the right, and let us assume that A and B are not mutually exclusive. That is, they share some overlap. So if I want the size of A union B, so what is A union B? Well, A union B is going to be everything that is in both A and B. So if I want to find the size of A and B, or A or B, that's going to be the size of A, so that's going to be all of this region here. And I'm going to add to it the size of B. So it's going to be everything there. Notice that that covers A and B, but there's an issue because I've covered this intersection twice. Therefore, I need to subtract one of those intersection areas so that, that I do not count it twice. So I give this usual property. So if I want to introduce a probability measure, then I can simply divide both sides of this equation by the cardinality of the sample space, S. So S is the corresponding sample space that they belong. So from here, I can get the property that the probability of A or B, so remember that union corresponds to or, is equal to the probability of A plus the probability of B minus the probability of A and B. So let us do an example. Suppose you roll two six-sided dice. So if I roll two six-sided dice, then I already know my sample space. So the size of my sample space is going to be equal to 6 squared, or simply 36. Let us assume that I'm interested in the events such that I roll a sum that is even. Let's call this E1. So E1, well, what's that consist of? So 1 plus 1 is going to be even, 1 plus 3 is going to be even, and 1 plus 5 is going to be even as well. If we go into row 2, 2 plus 2 is going to be even, 2 plus 4 is going to be even, as well as 2 plus 6. So notice that there's going to be three values in each row all the way down to the sixth row, 6, 2, 6, 4, and 6, 6. So if this is true, then what do we see? Well, the cardinality of E1 is going to be equal to 6 times 3, which is equal to 18. Let us also assume that we're interested in another event, E2. Let us assume we're interested in the event of rolling a sum less than 7. So if we're interested in rolling a sum of 7, then we're allowing that the sum be equal to 2, 3, 4, 5, or 6. And why do we start at 2? Because that's achieved by the event 1, 1. So who is in this set? sum less than 7. So we can start at 6 if we want. Uh, well, let's start off at 2. So the only way of getting 2 is 1 and 1. To get 3, that's achieved by getting 1 and 2, and 2 and 1. To get 4, that's going to be 1, 3, 2, 2, and 3, 1. To get 5, that's going to be 1, 4, 2, 3, 3, 2, 4, 1. So that's how to get 5, and to get 6, that is going to be 1, 5, 2, 4, 3, 3, 4, 2, 5, 1. So if this is true, then the size of E2 is going to be 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 plus 5, and that's all. So that's going to be 1 plus 2 is 3 plus 3 is 6 plus 4 is 10 plus 5 is going to be 15. So let us summarize what we have here. 
So the size of E1 is equal to 18. The size of E2 is equal to 15. So is it possible to get a sum that is even and a sum that is equal to 6? So let's see here. So an even sum, so let's consider E1 intersection E2. So that means this is the set of all values such that it is an even sum that is less than 7. So what is an even sum that is less than 7? So here's all my sums less than 7, so that's going to be even. 1, 2, 2, 1 is all odd. 1, 3 is going to be even. 2, 2 is going to be even. 3, 1 is going to be even. 1, 4 to 4, 1 is all going to be odd. And these all are even as well. So we have 5 plus 3 plus 1. So that's going to be equal to 5 plus 3 plus 1. So that's going to be 9. So now let's state the actual problem that we want. What is the probability of rolling a sum that is even or a sum less than 7? So I'm going to define E1 to be equal to a sum that is even. And I'm going to let E2 be equal to the event that the sum is less than 7, as we defined above. So we've already counted that the size of E1 is equal to 18. The size of E2 is equal to 15. And the size of their intersection is equal to 9. So therefore, the probability of E1 or E2, as we've already discussed before, is the probability of E1 plus the probability of E2 minus the probability of E1 intersection E2. So probability of E1 is going to be equal to 18 divided by 36. Probability of E2 is going to be 15 over 36. Probability of E1 and E2 is going to be 9 out of 36. So what is that going to come out to? So 18 plus 15 minus 9 is going to be 9 plus 15. So that's going to be 23 out of 36, which should be approximately 0 0.6388. So there's a, about a 64% chance of either getting a sum that is even or a sum that is less than 7. And that's an example of how to sort of use that property. So let us consider a very special case. Let us assume if A and B are mutually exclusive. So if two events are mutually exclusive, that means they cannot happen simultaneously. That means if you look at the Venn diagram, you have something such as A and B. So if this is true, then that means the size of A union B is just simply equal to the size of A plus the size of B. So remember that if this is the case, and that means the size of their intersection, A intersection B is going to be equal to 0. So what does that mean? So since we already have the property that the probability of A union B is equal to the probability of A plus the probability of B minus the probability of A intersection B, well, if these two events are mutually exclusive, this property or part of this formula is going to disappear, and we're just going to be left with the identity, the probability of A union B equals the probability of A plus the probability of B. And this is if the events are mutually exclusive. So let us demonstrate this with an example. Let us assume we're, we have the event E1 such that we want a rolling a sum that is odd. So similar to the last example, you can find that the size of E1 is going to be equal to 18. So there's 18 ways to get an odd sum if you roll two die. 
And let us assume another event, E2, is going to be rolling a sum that is at least 12. Well, the only way of getting a sum of 12 is going to be the event 66, and these events, assuming, are six-sided. So notice that this is the only way. So if that is the case, that means the size of E2 is going to be equal to 1. Now, these events are mutually exclusive, are they not? So E1 and E2 are mutually exclusive. Why? Because, because 6 plus 6 is not odd. And that's the only event in E2 that must satisfy the first property if they were not to be mutually exclusive. So that means what? So that means the size of E1 intersection E2 is going to be equal to 0. That means the probability of E1 or E2 is simply going to be the probability of E1 plus the probability of E2. So that's going to be 18 out of 36 plus 1 out of 36, or 19 out of 36, which is approximately equal to 0 0.5278. So there's about a 53% chance of either rolling a sum that is at least 12 or rolling a sum that is odd. So overall, let us summarize what we have here. We have two properties that we've discussed in this video. For any events, A and B, we have that the probability of A union B is equal to the probability of A plus the probability of B minus the probability of A intersection B. And notice here, in terms of the notations, the union is usually equal to the phrase or, and the intersection is equal to the word and. So either one could occur, either one, the other, or both. And if A and B are mutually exclusive, then we have the identity, the probability of A union B is just equal to the probability of A plus the probability of B. And these are what some people call the sum rules for probabilities.